Hi, I'm Emmanuel Kouros. In this lesson, we discuss the importance of keeping your MicroTIC CHR router OS up to date and get you through the process of upgrading to the latest version. Router OS version 7 introduces significant changes compared to version 6, offering improved performance, enhanced features, and support for modern networking standards. For example, Router OS 7 includes new routing protocols, WireGuard VPN support, and an overhauled BGP implementation, making it an essential upgrade for advanced networking tasks. Thankfully, this course is modeled around Router OS 7, which is the latest and which ensures you are not stuck with rule sets that no longer work. Now, why stay up to date? Keeping your Router OS updated ensures, first, access to new features and functionality, improve security by patching vulnerabilities, enhance stability and performance, Compatibility with the latest networking standards, amongst others. You can update Router OS using two methods. You can do that easily using Winbox GUI, which I recommend for beginners, or you can do so using the terminal by executing a few lines of command. We're going to demonstrate both. I should mention that basically every operation in MicroTIC Router OS can be carried out either using the graphic user interface or the command line terminal. The one you will use will depend on what you find more intuitive. To use the Winbox GUI, you navigate to System, Packages menu. You can see our currently installed version 7.15.3, which we pulled from the thread repository in Lesson 3. Now you hit Check for Updates. And here you have four update channels. When updating your MicroTIC Router OS, it's important to choose the right update channel based on your needs. Each channel serves a specific purpose balancing stability, features, and potential risk. I'll explain. The long-term channel, for instance, this channel focuses on maximum stability and reliability. It is ideal for production environments where network stability is critical, such as corporate networks, ISPs, or mission-critical systems. The advantage is that it is thoroughly tested and proven to be stable over time with minimal risk of introducing new bugs or issues. On the flip side, it may not include the latest features or enhancements. So if you value uninterrupted performance over cutting edge features, choose this channel. The next is stable channel. This offers a balance between stability and new features, making it the most recommended option for general users. Suitable for most networking scenarios, including small businesses, home labs, or moderate scale deployments. It has regular updates with the latest stable features. It's reliable enough for everyday use in production environments. As a disadvantage, you have a slightly more risk of minor bugs compared to the long-term channel. So if you want access to new features without compromising too much on stability, choose the stable channel. Next, we have the testing channel. This provides access to newer features and improvements that are still undergoing testing. It's best for advanced users, network administrators, or lab environment where testing and experimenting with new features is required. You get early access to features and fixes. It is ideal for learning and preparing for future deployments. On the flip side, it may contain bugs or performance issues, and is certainly not recommended for production use. So if you're experimenting with new networking protocols or preparing for a major deployment, this channel is worth exploring in a controlled environment. Lastly, the development channel. I like to call this the bleeding edge of router OS, containing the latest experimental features and updates. It is for developers, microtech experts, or those contributing to the ecosystem by identifying issues or testing new implementations. It provides you access to the newest features before they are released in other channels. Yet again, on the B side, it has high risk of instability, crashes, or incomplete features. It is unsuitable for any production environment. Use this channel only if you are troubleshooting or testing a non-critical lab-only setting. Your choice of update channel should align with the role and importance of your microtech device in the network. For a cloud environment like this one, I stick with the stable channel. And for physical microtech routers, I stick to long-term channel. As I have personally had an instance of frying a high-cost microtech router by simply applying an update that it couldn't handle quite well. Here, yeah, and nobody paid me back for it. So, having selected stable, we have the option to either download 
or download and install. The download only option downloads the update package but does not install it. It waits for the next time you reboot the router before it gets installed. This option works in a production environment where you don't want important network activities interrupted until the generally accepted scheduled reboot time. Then download and install. It downloads and installs the package automatically, then reboots the router. We're not going to use any of this since I want to still show you how this works from the terminal. So we go to terminal, new terminal. The command to run is slice system, package, update, check for update. The default channel used by the terminal is a stable channel, which again, I recommend for a cloud environment. You can see it's showing us the installed version, 7.15.3, latest version, 7.16.2, status, new version is available. Next, we say slice system, package, update, install. This command downloads the update, installs it, and reboots the router. We execute that with enter and wait for the router to reboot and come back to life. Okay, this is done. We're back to the router OS. And if you again go to system packages, you realize that our currently installed version has been updated to a newer one. These version numbers you see might vary depending on how many light years from now that you're watching this video after I uploaded it. But the concept remains the same. That's it. Our Microtik CHR is now ready for action. In the next video, We'll explore Microtik CHR IP services, including essential features like API, API SSL, FTP, SSH, Telnet, Winbox, WWW, and WWW SSL. You'll learn what each service does and its role in managing and interacting with your Microtik CHR. The differences between secure and non secure options, such as API versus API SSL and WWW versus WWW SSL, and how to enable disable or configure these services for optimal performance and security. Stay tuned.